Hello everyone, this is Rebecca Jane from yogawithrebeccajane.com. Welcome to our energy energizing practice. And for this one, our when we think about energy, it's going to be more of a in the line of strong, feeling strong. Um, through working, doing some core exercises, and um, so paying attention to the sacral chakra. And if, if you're not sure where that is, it's right, oh, not sacral, the solar plexus chakra, which is just above the sacral chakra. And what that is, is that's the area just above the navel and underneath the chest. And this is the chakra of um, it, feeling it powerful, confident, um, it's very uh, just invigorating. So that's what our practice is going to be about today. So let's, let's come onto your back. We will start on our back. So if you're feeling uh, like, oh, I'm not sure if I, I need a, a little bit more oomph today, well, join us for this class. So lying back, uh, lying onto your back, and we're going to start with a basic three-part breathing exercise just in a moment. First, settle down. So settling into, starting in a Shavasana shape, lying on your back, but letting the legs come closer together so they're hip distance apart. And the feet are relaxed. There's nothing, you don't have to, to, um, to flex the feet. Just take your hands and rest them on your belly. And just take a moment and, and explore the movement of the rise and fall of the belly as you breathe in and out. So just getting yourself first settled. So I am strong is the mantra for this practice, for this, maybe you can also take it beyond the practice. I am strong, I'm powerful. So the combination of the two, I am powerful. And we're going to begin this three-part breathing with the belly. So start to, as you breathe in through the nose, feel the belly expand, very much like a balloon being inflated. And then as you exhale, the belly deflates, it contracts. And, and closing the eyes, feeling into this belly breath. This has, this is, has a relaxing component to it. This is a very relaxing breath. Now we're going to bypass the tummy and work our way up to our rib cage. Place the hands on the rib cage. This is rib cage breathing, working our way up to the rib cage, breathing in and feeling the rib cage expand. And as you breathe out, the rib cage narrows. And letting the belly relax here, other than when you have to exhale and you pull the tummy muscles in to, to push the air out. So let's take three breaths here, inhaling. This is the breath we use in yoga, is the, actual, is the rib cage rather than the belly breathing. So that we maintain some tone to the muscles in the abdominals so that we, in order to protect the spine. So that's the, one of the reasons, there's many reasons, but that's a huge, um, that's one of the, uh, the primary reasons for it. So inhaling, pressing into the hands as you, and exhaling, drawing out. So maintaining that toning, the strength of those abdominal muscles that protect our spine. And then slide the hands now up to your collarbones, fingers on the collarbones, and take a breath in. Now we're breathing up into the upper part of our sho uh, shoulders, the, th the thoracic. So this is the higher part of your respiratory system, which is the, has, these are the secondary muscles. So you're obviously the rest of your body is going to move as well, but concentrate on breathing into the hands. So we spend a lot of time up here throughout the day. What we want to do is take the hands back to the rib cage, keep the hands resting there and start to, 
to move into our ujjayi breath where you inhale through the nose, create that ocean-like sound by closing off the glottis, which is the, um, which is the back of your throat, that little flap that opens and closes as you breathe in and out, protecting you from swallowing food into your lungs. And think of, just imagine for a moment, what the closing off or the, the constricting of that um, glottis is very much like a, um, a, ho a garden hose. When the garden hose dribbles, the water comes out of the garden hose, you're watering your plants, but when you, if you need more power, you put your thumb on the end of it, and then all of a sudden the water goes, spurts out and becomes powerful and can go further. That's the same exact effect that constricting your glottis has when you breathe, so you're bringing in about 50% more air into your lungs. Just some information that's really interesting. That's take our, bring our feet and flat, flatten them on the ground, knees pointing up, and then, then hug your knees into your chest. So throughout the practice, ujjayi breath, inhaling through the nose, and exhaling through the nose or the mouth, and hug your right knee into your chest, extend your left leg, let it, the left foot rest on the ground. Turn your left toes inward to the right just a little bit and then straighten your right leg. Taking a breath in, and as you breathe out, bring your right leg a little bit in towards you. Lift, press the heel up toward, that right heel up towards the ceiling. Press through that left leg as if you're standing on that left leg. Take an inhale, and let's exhale both knees into your chest. Keep your left knee into your chest, extend your right leg. Place that right heel on the ground, and turn your toes slightly in, so it just engages your inner thigh muscles and breathe in and as you breathe out, straighten your left leg. Kick your left heel up to the ceiling in your right, and press into that bottom leg too and that foot as if you're standing. And then take an inhale, re straight, be it, bend those knees. We're gonna do another set, but a little bit different this time. We hug your right knee into your chest, extend your left leg and hover it off the ground. If this doesn't work for you, you can always do what we just did before. Keep put it on the ground. Turn your toe, left toe slightly in to the right, breathing in, and as you breathe out, straighten your right leg. Keep your head on the ground, breathing in, and then as you exhale, hug your knees into your chest. Waking up this, these abdominals. Hug your left knee in, keep that, and extend your right leg. Let that right foot hover. Flex the foot, kick through that right heel. Take an inhale and exhale, left leg straightens. Kick through the heel of that left foot. And then take a breath in and re-hug your knees into your chest. Adding on, keep your right knee into your chest. Exhale that left leg and hover it off the ground. Take a breath in and this time your head and shoulders lift up and then straighten your right leg. Now stay here, take a breath in and slide the hands. You can always put one hand behind your head if you need the extra support. Keep going, keep going, breathing in as if you're trying to climb up your leg and then release the hands and, let, and stretch the fingers towards the ceiling, breathing in. And then as you breathe out, lower, bring, hug the knees back in the chest, head returns to the ground. Take a breath in and hug your left knee into your chest, extend your right leg. Take a breath in, head and shoulders lift off the ground. Exhale, straighten your left leg. Breathing in and use your exhalation to climb up your left leg. Both feet are actively pressing through the heels. And you keep walking up your leg and finally release the hands from your leg, but continue to maintain the stretch and reach. And then breathe in oh, and hug your knees into your chest, little rocks. You will feel this. And you know, if you find, oh, I didn't get much out of this, you can always do more of those types of exercise, maybe a little faster. Place your feet flat on the ground now. Let your arms rest next to your sides and walk your heel and tap that middle finger. So we're preparing for our bridge. Spin the palms up for this one. So it's a, you're in this state of receiving and your shoulders are open. Take a breath in. 
And as you breathe out, lift your tailbone off the ground and vertebra by vertebra lift up. So you can come as high as the lower back, middle back, and maybe possibly the upper back. Chin is slightly tucked. Draw your, your white eye slightly. You don't want to squeeze it too much so you can't breathe. Maintaining that throat lock. And from here, squeeze the thighs as if you have a block between those legs. Engage those inner thighs. And inhaling, staying up. And then as you exhale, you're going to take your pubic bone, curl it towards your navel as if there's a string attached to your navel and your pubic bone. And then what this does is it tones those deep abdominal muscles and your glute muscles. That's, and then take another inhale, chest towards your chin, and then exhale, curl the pubic bone towards your navel. And then inhale, lift up, and then exhale, pubic bone towards navel. You'll feel this just tiny, tiny, tiny movement. It's nothing too massive, but just enough to give your tone those muscles. Let's take one more deep breath in, and with the exhalation, lower yourself down, starting from the upper part of your back, working your way all the way down. Oh. Take a pause at the bottom. Let's return to the rib cage breathing, Ujjayi breath, inhaling. And thinking about that garden hose, put the thumb on the end and there's more power. The water can spurt, or not spurt, be, it will be forced out just by putting your thumb on, which is interesting. That's the exact same thing that's happening with Ujjayi. And then let's cross your ankles, and I'm going to make a video on teaching how to do that. So if you have any questions, there'll be a short video. Let's extend, let's roll up, and let's extend your legs forward. Give yourself a moment in a forward bend. Coming back to the Ujjayi breath. Inhaling, it means victorious breath. So it very much relates to I am powerful mantra. I am strong. Let's take an inhale, let's roll ourselves back up and swing around onto our hands and knees. And once on our hands and knees, press back into a child's pose. Let your forearms settle down, little wiggles of the hips, loosening up those hips, forehead resting. Take your hands and press your hands into the ground, reach them forward. And what I do here is I actually take the heels of my hands and push them forward as I, while simultaneously pressing my, my hips into my heels or towards my heels. And then once I feel a little bit, I found the, I can't go any further, then I place my palms back down. Take a breath in. And then as you breathe out, lift up into your tabletop. Let's do a few little cats and cows, three sets to warm up the spine. Exhaling, rounding through the spine, inhaling, arching. Purpose for cats and cows is it, it's, it's, a, it's a tummy toner, but also very much a way to warm up your spine before we move deeper into the practice. Back and forth, exhaling, drawing the tummy muscles in, dropping your head, chin towards your chest, then inhale, open the chest, tilt your tailbone up. So there's an opening and then there's a closing in to yourself. And let's inhale back into your, ta into your neutral spine. Curl the toes under. Get heavy in the hands. Breathe in and then lift up into your downward dog. Bring your feet so they're hip distance apart. Take a breath in and let yourself find where you want to go. If you're thinking about strong and powerful, where would you go in your downward dog to feel that sense of power and strength? Take another two deep breaths here, Ujjayi breath, inhaling. 50% more air goes into your lungs by um, constricting that, that, um, that glottis. So just think about that, 50%. Taking an inhale, let's lower the knees to the ground. Walk your hands a little further forward and come into a, knee, a plank with the knees down. So some of you might say, oh, that I can't really do that. This is too much, so just bring your knees closer in. But we're, I'm going to do one where my knees are back. I'm in this plank. Bring your out, wrists underneath your shoulders, okay? So you're in a plank. Uh, if your knees were up, you'd be straight. <laughs> oh, you'd be 
straight with the legs. So take a breath in, and we're going to lower down about halfway in Chaturanga. So your elbows are angling in towards each other. I'm going to show you from this angle so you can see. And you're lowering down halfway, squeezing the elbows in and lifting up. You're looking down. I'm looking at you. But I want you to see that my elbows squeeze in. They don't, uh, with a typical push-up, your elbows open up to the sides. With a yogi push-up, chaturanga, it's to the sides. Different type. We're going to do two more. You'll find your arms will oh, look like they'll just get toner and toner, stronger and stronger. I am strong. And then lift back up. Let's take a pause in your child's pose, feeling into those arms, breathing in, maybe taking the hands and massaging those shoulders. Ah, breathing in, ujjayi breath, exhaling. So even the exhalation, more air comes out. So you're releasing the stale air that sits right at the bottom of the lungs um, by, by breathing, doing the ujjayi breath. So coming back up into your tabletop, curl the toes under, exhale, downward dog. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath up. And then lower the knees back down again. Take your right foot, reach it back behind you. Kick through that right heel. The foot is off the ground as if you're pressing into the wall behind you with that right foot. Turn your right toes in just a little bit to the left. Keep your, make sure the wrists are underneath your shoulders. Take a breath in and knee to nose. So bring your knee in towards your nose, round up through the spine, and then inhale, re-straighten that right leg. Two more. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, knee to nose. Tummy work, back work. Inhale back and hold the, the right leg back. Now it's pivot on your left leg so that it, it, it pivots so the left foot is now on the left side of the mat. And then reach that right foot out to the right side. So you might have to look at me to understand what I'm saying. So you're stretching out to the left side. Reach your right arm up and either keep it lifted or bring it over your right ear. It really depends on what you need. Press into the outer edge of that right foot and then left hip pushes forward, evening out the hip joints. <sighs> Breathing in. And then as you breathe out, lower that right hand down. Swing your left leg back. Now you're back into your all fours. Just sit back on your heels for a moment, little circles. And then come back into your tabletop. Take a breath in, wrists are under shoulders. Le left leg kicks back. Heel is a little, is kicking into the wall behind you. Turn the toes slightly to the right. Take a breath in, and as you breathe out, knee to nose. Take a peek at your wrists, yeah. Make sure they're stacked underneath. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, lengthen. Stretch through that leg. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, lengthen. And let's hold this. Place the left toes down and pivot on that right knee. Bring, swing that right leg to the right side of the mat. Right hand underneath your right shoulder and come onto that um, left foot. Press into that left foot. Toes are pointing forward. It's, this is one of the hardest ones to teach on, at all, <laughs> whether it's in person or not. Reach your left arm up or bring that left arm over. It's just one of those things where you're kind of like, how do you explain this? So teachers, students have to kind of walk, and then once you get it one side, you're fine for the other. Take your right hip forward. I've never heard a teacher who could explain it really well. It's just one of those weird postures. Inhale, lift your left arm up, and then swing around. Sometimes I'll teach it at the beginning of class just so that you know in advance. And then sit back onto your heels. Take a pause here, just, just to get your wrists, loosen up those wrists. Okay, power. Let's come on to our all fours now. Curl the toes on a power doesn't have to be fast. Actually, power is often more so slow. Now we're in our downward dogs. 
options here, you can do the same thing we just did without the side stretch or on your hands and knees or stay with me in the downward dog. Inhale, just kick your right leg back behind you, not up to the ceiling, but behind you to the back wall. Take a breath in and knee to nose, round through the spine and keep moving forward until your shoulders and wrists are in line and you're in a one-legged plank. And then extend your right leg, but stay in your plank. And then lower your right foot down and then exhale, downward dog. We'll do that on the other side. Inhale, left leg back, kick it back, flex the foot, turn the toe slightly in, breathing in and as you breathe out, knee to nose, Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going until wrists and shoulders are in line. And then extend your left leg back. And then place it down next to your right leg. Exhale, downward dog. Take a pause here, one full breath. If you need a child's, then take a child's. Child's pose, I mean. Okay, we're doing one more set. Inhale, right leg back. This is an arm strengthener. Uh, core strengthener, and then exhale, knee to nose. Keep moving, moving forward till shoulders and wrists are on line, and then just extend your right leg, stay here, and then lower that right foot down, exhale, downward dog. One more side, inhale, left leg back. Kick through that left foot, exhale, knee to nose. Keep going until you're in that one-legged plank, and just Stay in the plank, inhale, kick that left leg back, lower it down next to your right foot, ah, downward dog. Walk your hands towards your feet and let yourself hang here in a forward bend. Opposite hand to opposite elbow. <sighs> Bent knees or soft knees. So this is your recovery. This is your time to allow the spine and all the tension, everything to just Roll off your back, roll onto the ground. <sighs> allow the arms to get heavy, allow the head to get heavy. About four pounds at least of weight, maybe much more, but at least with the head and the arms. <sighs> and then, then let's release the elbows and let's roll ourselves up slowly and gently. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And let, once you've lifted, take your shoulders up towards your ears and roll them back. Just let them settle down. Whew. It's kind of nice, huh? So we're going to do a standing pose, standing balance. Very much like the exact thing we did when we were lying on our back. So it will all become familiar. We're, all, we're ready to do it. So right foot is your standing support leg. Left leg lifts up into a stag, 90 degree angle. Hands at your heart. So you have an option here. You can stay right here or take your hands and hug your left, the hands into your knee, the knee into your hands. <laughs> or you could take your left hand and grab hold of that big toe with your peace sign. So thumb, index finger and middle finger. Right arm lifts up and straighten your left leg. Kick through that left heel. Your bottom leg, knee is soft. Soften the shoulders, breathing in. Thinking positive things like, I am strong. I am powerful. Watch me, watch me, look at me, how strong. And then bring that, left, that leg back in and then lower it back down. And little shakes. So the option is you could just take one hand and keep it bent. You just play, find out what works for you. If, if grabbing hold of your foot, if you're very tight in your hamstrings, you're not going to be able to straighten that leg. Do the best you can. Do what works for you at the moment. Let's bring hands to heart. Let's lift your right leg up. So our bottom leg is always there to, that's our support leg. So you have to make sure it's in the right position, the foot, it's not out to the side, it's straight, your knee is soft. Now, choice here, hug your right knee into your chest and you could stay here, or right hand on that, that knee, or take your peace sign of that right hand, wrap it around, that, bind it on that right big toe, and reach forward, 
Kick that right foot forward, left arm up. And smile. I am strong. I am powerful. Ah, look at me. Ah, yes. And then lower down. It's very invigorating. Even if you're holding and you just have one arm and your legs bent, it's that in itself. Ah, doesn't feel good, huh? So that's where, I don't care where you are on the mat, to stay where you are. Inhale, reach your arms up. And that's forward bend. Let's take a moment here to stretch out the backs of those legs. Release the tension. And then come onto your hands and knees. And come onto your right hip and swing your legs around to the front of the mat. So they're pointing to the front. And we're gonna lower ourselves down either you know, arms reaching forward, hands under your knees, whatever works for your hands on the ground, lowering yourself down. <sighs> Feeling really proud of yourself for, do, for trying, doing your best. Hug your knees into your chest, give yourself a nice little hug. And then let's do some circles. Take your hands on either the knees themselves, below the knees or the outside of the knees and circle the knees around. It's interesting. I'm part of the same society where uh, you know you feel like fast is better. Fast means you'll be stronger, and that's going the op opposite direction. But as I've aged, I've gotten a little bit older and wiser. Um, I realize that the strength comes from actually going slower. Fast is good to some degree, no doubt. Going out for a run and things like that—that's fine. But, and that's good for your heart, but so is doing things slowly. That actually impacts your heart too. And it also works muscles that you wouldn't do if you were uh, going fast. You don't get to actually um, activate certain muscles. So let's open up the arms out to the sides, keep the knees hugged in, and then drop the knees to the left. Turn your gaze to the right. The Ujjayi breath. We're going to shift now to just regular breathing, softening the breath. It could be tummy breathing at this point or belly breathing. And then lift your knees back up. Give yourself a hug. Feel free to stay in these um, warm down twists as longer than how I'm doing them. You might find, drop your knees to the right, turn your gaze to the left. You might need an extra few minutes and then you do your Shavasana after the, the video. You can just turn my, the video off and stay in the, in the Shavasana for another maybe two to five minutes. Try and get five minutes in if you can. Shavasana is extremely important because it Helps, it gives your body a resting moment, and it also gives it time to readjust. The spine can now realign, and, it's also, and the body is trying to make sense of what just happened. <laughs> and then let's extend our legs and prepare for Shavasana. Trying to make sense meaning that you've just done all these things to it, and so often in most exercise, you get up and just get going. This, you give your body a chance to get a feel for what's hap what happened rather than jumping out of it. This is part, very much part of our yoga practice. So for the next few moments, let yourself settle down. And while you continue on in Shavasana, what I always recommend is that you just turn off the video because there's always going to be one that follows. Um, I'm, I teach these live, so my live people, I t I'll turn it off so you can just stay resting. But take the time to just 
for this moment. It's such an important part of the practice. So you can actually also feel in what's different from when you first started the practice, from the beginning to the end. The end, that's why 30 minutes is so perfect, because by the time you get to the end, you feel like you're a different person. So as I bring my hands in front of my heart in Anjali Mudra, that's the name of this hand shape in yoga, and it really just basically means um, welcome. It's a way of saying namaste, welcoming some people or saying thank you or saying goodbye. So this is Rebecca Jane from yoga with RebeccaJane.com. Thank you so much for being with me and I hope you enjoyed this class. Feel free to subscribe by pressing that button at the far right side if you enjoy my videos and comment be comment below just let me know how any questions you might have or any feedback and thumbs up other than that thank you so much and i'll see you soon namaste